Welcome back to another amazing episode of MedShield Movement Connect show with me, Dr. Fez, and I have brought you another phenomenal guest. And today it is an international rugby player, a firefighter, and a brand ambassador. Somebody who is inspirational to everybody she comes across. Can't wait for you guys to meet Zintenda Oonde. Get ready to know what you don't know about being body brilliant. This is the MedShield Movement Connect show, where we connect the dots between fitness, health, wellness, nutrition, and of course you. Hosted by me, Dr. Fezim Kize, and a special guest that we have every month, sharing knowledge, insights, and groundbreaking tips on how to get fitter, be stronger, and live healthier. Turn up the volume and listen close. Today you amplify. It's the MedShield Movement Connect show. Let's go. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. I'm really excited to have you here today. Thank you so much, Fez, for having me. It's really a great honor to be here with you guys. Now, as I say, on the show, we're always trying to connect the dots with everybody who's viewing. You know, humble beginnings to people who've done incredible things. And you've done that. I know Uti, you come from Inanda, mm -hmm. which is a humble township in KZN. Um, as a KZN person, I know it quite well. But what was it that told you that you wanted to be an athlete? Well, Fez, um, let me just say, for me, becoming an athlete or rather playing rugby um, was actually an escape route for me. Mm -hmm. um, as we all know, I grew up at Inanda, and at that time growing up, it wasn't really a, a good environment to be raising a child. I know um, there were rapes, uh, drugs happening around. So growing up, being raised by a single parent who was working as a domestic worker, she would leave us um, for a whole week. It's just me and my sister, you know. And she would say, just be girls, be ladies, stay in the house, don't do this and that. Um, and for me, going out and seeing what was happening around my, my area or my environment, I told myself, for me to become something one day, to be where I want to be and to achieve something, I have to be disciplined, I have to make sure that I don't get involved with everything that was happening around me. Um, I was that one child who, who was just in touch with everything, played uh, so many things with, with the guys around the areas, um, with my cousins especially. Um, so I learned a lot whilst growing up um, and that's when I started realizing that for me to be, um, to do something nice for my, for my mother, to be out of this environment, I needed to work hard. I needed something that uh, I would focus on mm -hmm. and that was sports, which would keep me away from everything that was happening. Um, that's when I started playing soccer with the, with the guys. Um, that's when I, when I then joined high school, I said, okay, I'll, I'll play uh, soccer because you know, in, 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 in the rural areas and in, in, at the locations, that's how you start playing. So that's the sport you start playing. Um, so I played soccer with the guys, but when I got to high school, there was no soccer. Um, at that time, there was touch rugby. So I said, okay, I'll join touch rugby for the first year because there's no soccer. And anyways, when I look at the other sports, which is netball and hockey, I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not my type of bread. You know, it's it's just too easy for me, and it's something that would challenge me. So I joined I joined uh, touch rugby. Then the following year, they introduced the actual contact sports. Mm. And for me, just being on the rugby field, touching the ball, uh, tackling someone, I felt this is where I feel at ease. This is where I find my happiness. This is where uh, I feel like I belong. Um, and then when the years went by, I joined, I played SA Games under 16, I, I got called up for the Sharks um, 2018, uh, I mean, sorry, 2008, same year 2008, I made the Springbok under 20s. Um, and that's when everything started, you know, uh, it, it wasn't really that easy, I faced a lot of challenges. Uh, before I made the actual uh, Springbok 15s team, you know. Um, but it was quite a, a beautiful journey. I learned a lot um, and it made me realize that you, for you to be somewhere, there's, there's certain things that you need to do, there's certain dishes, decisions that you need to make, you know. Um, not looking back at where you come from, but uh, just working hard uh, to achieve your goals. Definitely, and I mean, 
here you are today, having done all those incredible things. And there are so many parts of you that, that everybody knows in terms of the other work that you do as a firefighter. Yeah. But I always find it interesting to look back at, at people's family nucleuses and kind of that structure and to see where they started from to kind of also see what might have driven them. You were one of how many kids or children uh, within the house? I was only two. Two. Just me and my sister, and you then my sister. dad has other two brothers on the side. So it was you playing with a bunch of the guys, as you said, yeah. kind of the sports and the soccer and everything else. And I'm imagining you always wanted to beat them, and that was kind of like <laughs> big drugs, yeah? I always beat them. They always came to my house to collect their pockets. Always. I was a star. <laughs> There's nothing that I didn't play that guys played, and I was always the best at them. Um, and... For me, people will say, ah, Sinclair, everything you do is manly. Everything you do is, is just tough, you know. And I think I took that from my mother because mm. when growing up, um, she, as much as she was working as a domestic worker, she didn't have much, you know, but she always made sure that uh, we have uh, the things that we need. And she fought. I even knew my mother's pay slip. She'd come and say, listen, look, this is... <laughs> yeah, I know. Look, this is, this is what the money that I have, and I can only do this and that, you know. Um, and she was very strong, despite that my dad was, was uh, uh, still working as a teacher, you know. She had everything, but she just... He, he, he was never part of our life, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he never supported um, my mother understanding the situation that she was on, and she was strong about that. She never gave up on us, and that's one thing I always... I admire about her that through the struggle that she went through, um, not having much, but she did, she could have easily just said, I can't take off you kids and just leave us like that. But she fought. Whatever she had, she shared with us. And that that's part of, of, of something that I take with me every day. You know, when you get into a camp and you feel like you're down, you can't take it anymore, you're tired, you feel like giving up. But I think about, I think of her and I say, she she had much more bigger problems than I did. And she, she, she didn't just say, oh no, I'm tired, I'm just letting it go, you know. Uh, she pushed through them. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's that's something I take in, in everything that I do, whether it's my work um, as a firefighter, whether it's uh, uh, rugby, you know, when and I feel like, oh, now it's getting really tough, yeah. you know. But I think there's no reason for me to give up because there's a person who believed that, uh, a person who never gave up on me, who believed that she wanted something better for us. So I also push, you know. I love that mm. because, and the reason why I'm even like laughing and I'm smiling to myself, that's a common story that I find the things that push us are the things that sometimes also used to push our parents and yeah. their parents before them because my grandmother was a domestic worker and she pushed my mother to go and be the first person to go get a kind of a degree in an education and then she pushed me and my brother and now we became doctors and there's like that common push thread where it's like I have to if they did it oh come on I should That's be able it. to I mean, it's a, it's a rugby yeah, international hey, athlete, hey, rugby player, firefighter, yes, brand ambassador know, extraordinaire. You can't even, <laughs> she's trying to act like she's not the most. Yeah, no, but those, those, those are the things that actually make us the people that we are today, exactly. you know. Um, and one of the things I always try and do is to inspire the, the young girls because I know what they, I've been there, so I know what they go through. You know, some of them will take that and, and look at us as, as professional players and think, had this just happened, you know, not mm. realizing that we are also where they, where, where they are now, where they feel like, I could never be uh, Sia Colisi, I could never be uh, Serena Williams, you know, because of the situation that I have at home. But I always tell them, it, it doesn't matter where you come from, you know. Uh, to, Take the situation that you have in, at home and make that situation strengthen you to be a better person one day. I love that. And for me, I feel like even making it into the squad, the Springbok Women's Squad, and kind of the things that you've done and how you've progressed and how you inspire even your teammates, mm. that isn't where your story is. There's other facets to you because you made the squad. And because of how rugby is right now for women within our country, as much as there is the male side, the springbok side, where they get to be able to be full professional athletes, there's also now the semi-professional kind of entity where you might also need to work to be able to get more funds. And that's what you ended up doing because you yeah. aren't just an athlete, you're also <laughs> a firefighter. But for me, it's crazy that you decided to be a firefighter. Out of all the things. Come on, eh? you could have Out been something. Out of all the things. It's, both of them very demanding. <laughs> both of them need you to be very present mm. and like there. But you do that. I could have been a model. <laughs> you know, I mean, 
so many Imagine. other avenues but you decided to do that why was it yeah. that you decided to go down that route instead of maybe doing the modeling thing or <laughs> something else that might not be demanding yeah um you know how it is i would say it, it's not just uh, a rugby syndrome but it's a south african syndrome as a whole uh, as a whole when you look at women in sports you know uh Especially at that time, I could say now it's much better compared to, to the years when I was still playing under 16 and stuff, you know. Um, there was just minimal support for women's sport, you know. Um, so you had to obviously find something that will sustain yourself and the family. So for me, when I went to Durban University of Technology where I studied sport management, um, always wanted to, do, to be involved with sport, obviously, so that was... The, the, the path that I decided I want to take. Mm -hmm. But after doing my BTEC, I then realized being the eldest at home, obviously I needed to look after my mother and my sister. Yeah. yeah, so I felt like, okay, I needed a job. Okay, that time I was working as a fitness instructor at Virgin Active. Uh, but I realized that, no, I need, I, I need money, I need income, I need to look at my sister, I need to buy myself toiletries, you know. Um, and then there were posts for firefighting at King Shaga. And I said, okay, I think I should try it. At first, it was something I wanted to do for, for money, for mm. income, you know, to take care of myself. So I went to King Shaga, did the physical testing, passed them by flyers. By the time I, I got to, to the station, every new, everybody <laughs> knew that there was a, a rugby player that was coming, yeah. you know, with the sit-up. I just did sit-ups, push-ups, and I sat there trying to motivate the other girls. I, I love you how know? you're just like, you know, I mean, I don't you, even know. They should have known who I was, but I did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, at first it was just about um, getting money and, and being able to sustain myself. But when I, get, I got to the actual... Uh, firefighting, understanding that firefighting is not just, you know, about uh, receiving money at the end of the month. For you to be able to save someone, for you to be able to run into the fire when people are coming out, it has to be in your heart, yeah. you know. So I went through that because uh, we did our training at uh, Eteguni Municipality. Mm -hmm. So we were put under a lot of pressure. We were put in buildings with fire and you had to get out. We were put in, you know, you were put in trainings um, where you felt like, no, I, I really I don't think if I should, I should be part of this. But again, just doing that, understanding what firefighting is about, um, I developed so much love for firefighting. Um, I found out that it, it, it has the same sentiment with what I'm doing with rugby. You have to be fit uh, physically, mentally, you know. But above it all, it's, it's not about just working. It's about being able to make someone stay when someone is trapped in a building or someone is trapped in a plane and you're there to save them. Because when, when you get there, those people re are relying on you, yeah. you know. So to be that hero and, and, and being able to go home and say, Mom, listen today. I, I saved someone. You know, I, I, someone who didn't didn't even believe that they're gonna make it through the day, but I came there and I made sure that 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 that, that person got home safely and then back to their families, and and that's what made me fell fell in love with firefighting. Mm -hmm. It's not just just working. Of yes, course. the trainings are hectic and stuff, but to be able to to save someone and 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 make someone's day for 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 that uh, for, for on that day, mm. for me it was just above um, everything mm. else. And it is one of those things where they call it a vocation. It's not just a job. Mm. It's something that really has to call to you because yeah. sometimes what you get paid isn't, isn't equated yes. to the things you do because life, <laughs> like somebody's life, that's probably one of the most stressful things mm. that you can do. And this is, as you say, coming from an athlete who represents her country. Mm. Um, it's, it's always, and I feel for me, I can understand that. I can't understand <clears throat> representing my country as an athlete, <laughs> but I can definitely understand in terms of the life element and going mm. in there. And for you, where do you find, because we talked about, you talked about the mentality, right? Mm. The mental um, element and the physical element, both of them are very similar. But mm. do you find that in the big match uh, situations where you really need to perform, can you almost find that similarity with when you need to go into a blazing fire or a building to go get somebody out? Is there a difference? Yeah, because when you, especially when you're playing against teams that you know have a high quality of rugby, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Australia, <coughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to 
to ease yourself down and, 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 and calm yourself because uh, to be able to play better. Uh, it's like I always tell, I, I, I've, it's like I form, there's something that I form even at, at the station. The moment that those bells go boo, Mm. What happens is you, you, you get that freak on your heart to say, okay, what's happening now? Because yeah. you don't know, you, you yeah. really don't know the scenario that you're going to face, you know? And you feel like, okay, what's going on? Uh, at first, when I, when I came there, every time the bells rang, I would, you know, crash and be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But then I, I, just, I found a way of calming myself down to say, okay, this is what I'm here for. This mm. is what I was born to do. This is what I love. This is what is inside me. So every time the bells went, what I'll do is just scream and say, yeah! This is what we have, what to do. And I run to the truck, you know. By the time I get to the truck and I'm wearing my fire gear, already I'm feeling calm, mm. you know, because I've, I've told myself, okay, the bells have rang. This is what I'm here to, to do. This is what I love. And it calms me down. Yeah. It's same with rugby. I know I'm going to play New Zealand. Oh my gosh, we only played New Zealand in 2018 um, at, the, at, the, at the World Cup and Commonwealth Games. I was, I was freaked out literally to say, oh my gosh. Wow, I'm playing New Zealand. But I'm like, yeah, this is this is the team that I wanna play. This is the type of level where I wanna be. You yeah. know, I wanna test my 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 playing game. I wanna test how I am as a person, how I am as an athlete against the best. So that when the World Cup, uh, 15th World Cup come, then I know who I'm facing. Yeah, I know yeah. where my level of standard is. When I go back home, I know what I need to work on. You know, um, so it, it 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 all it all comes inside of you, how you take it and how you take the pressure and how you calm yourself down, you know. And with something that you do with passion and love, everything, whatever situation that comes to you, you're able to calm it down yourself. You're able to, to, to be at your seat and say, no, I got this. I'm here for a reason. I know what I'm going to do, you know. So that, that, that's yeah, how yeah. it should be yeah. anyway. Yeah. Now, yeah. I can, and, and for me, just sitting across from you, because I've sat with people and we, we always talk about this. This is something that I find all of you who do th things at a high level mm -hmm. actually exude. And that's even when things are stressful, you almost have that voice that tells you, you know, but this is what you've trained for. This is what, and it's like mm -hmm. you feel confident that all the things that you've been doing up until whichever point it is have led you to that. And I think that's one of the biggest starts we always talk about on the show to kind of connecting that self-confidence that comes mm -hmm. from that hard work that you've put in. Yeah, it, it's it's never easy that I can tell you, Fez. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much pressure um, mm -hmm. just being at camp, you know, because... There's a lot of load of work, load load of, of gym work, field sessions, conditioning stuff. Um, and you still need to you have calls at home, mom, this and that and that. So you have you have competition. It's, it's not just you're not the only twelve or thirteen, you're not the only center there, you know. And it gets into your mind, it it, it, it gets into into your space where you need to, to focus, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but like I said, it's about how you take it as a person. Yeah. I've I, I've been my mom has taught me very well how to 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 be, to be calm. You know how to not just jump into conclusions and 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 whenever things are not going your way, uh, not to just freak out. You know you always need to be calm. You need, you always need to understand why are you here. Understand the reason why you're there. Understand the reason where you want to be. Understand your your, your goals and what you want to achieve out of that. Um, and by doing that, when, when whatever that comes away, you're able to tackle it, you're able to sit down and say, no, I'll face this just like the, all the other problems that I've faced, mm. you know. And that has worked for me. Um, I know this one stage I was so big, I've, I gained so much weight, I couldn't make it to the Springbok team mm. uh, for quite some time. They had the World Cup in 2014 and I was not part of that. I was. I could say I was still young, but uh, the talent was there. Mm -hmm. um, I got big and uh, I couldn't even do anything, but I still played my position, you know. But that's when then I realized that for me to get where I wanted to be, I needed to sit down and think, what, where do I want to go? Do I still want to play rugby? Where do I want to be? Where do I want to be with rugby? You know, I sat down, I had to eliminate friends, I had to um, eliminate some of the things that I was doing. No, I wasn't taking drugs. I wasn't drinking either. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. I was just like, what, what was it? No, yeah. but you course corrected. You took the things that yes. were making you not be where you wanted where to be. Where I wanted be, to be, you know? yes. I uh, started hanging with the friends that had the same dreams and intentions um, about life that I wanted, uh, that wanted uh, good things out of their lives. And from there, um, the following year, I got a call up 
from the Springbok uh, women's rugby sevens team, uh, Coach Pauli. Um, and from there, everything just uh, started to smooth up, you know, everything just started to come together, you know. And I realized that it was all the decision that I took. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it's what I I sat down and said, okay, now this is the path we, this is the path that I want to take now. But for me to actually get there, mm -hmm. there's certain things that I need to eliminate. There's uh, friends that I need to to choose. There's things that I need to do right. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it, it worked quite well because, to be honest, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't from the from 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 that game changer or the decision that I took back then. Love it. And I mean, right here, as you're sitting, you become a brand mm. um, and you work with incredible brands. And I know all of this, your life experience, you are somebody who's very passionate about making sure that you lift others who are coming kind of after you. And one of the big monikers and one of the brands that you did is that impossible is nothing. And I mm. think for me, it speaks to somebody <laughs> who's aware that eyes are on you. You know, yeah. Zintle is not just Uzintle from Minanda. It's like, it's Zintle and Daonde. Like, you are somebody who is an inspirational entity. What is it you want to make sure people remember when it's all said and done, when you hang everything up from the firefighter gear to the athlete <laughs> gear to the entrepreneur, whatever it is, when you say, I've lived this life, what is it that you want as your message to the young girls and boys mm. who are going to follow you? Okay, firstly, let me just say... Um you spoke about uh, impossible is nothing. Uh, I think just with Adidas coming to my life, that was even another game changer. Because as athletes, what we fail to understand is that we ourselves, especially with women athletes, are a brand on mm -hmm. our own, you know. Um, and they've taught me that. I got to learn that I'm not just Uzin Tenda one day, but I am a brand, okay. you know, because for them to come and, 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 and want to be associated with me means that I was doing uh, something good. Mm -hmm. And that uplifted me, you know, a young girl from Inanda, I never thought I'd be on billboards. I never thought my face would be on a bus where we do impossible is nothing campaign. But just as you said, they proved that, um, impossible is nothing, you know, because they're not only just about um, uh, being a brand, but they they, they they more of about, you know, sports can change life, you know. Um, I never thought it was possible or I would be here where I am today, but, you know, impossible is nothing really, because we t we have j we have barriers that we face and we fought and 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 to be where we are today you know mm -hmm. it's it's it really is great opportunities for us it it really is um great possibilities that we, we thought would never be able to 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 break um so for every for every young girl i always say that we we have scars mm -hmm. you know we a lot of young girls, a lot of female athletes. Um, I know even with, with the Springbok uh, women's team from people, from, uh, young girls from Eastern Cape, we all have different stories. We all come from different backgrounds and some of them are not good, you know. We have scars, we have been stabbed and stuff, but we, only you can turn your, your scars into stars. Mm -hmm. It does not matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the circumstances at home, but you can always change those circumstances you can always take those uh, 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 situations at home and let those situations uh, strengthen you and to be a better person beautiful and i love that to be the message that that is always sent out it's something that's close to my heart as well mm -hmm. um, especially because of our similar backgrounds but before <laughs> We wrap we'll it up. I know. I feel like I let my mother down now because she's gonna be like, ah, "Why didn't you become this?" Dog, come on. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Leave it. Before you go, everybody has to go through this quick fight. Oh, you can't think too gosh. much. I don't want explanations. Blah, 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 blah. You are a woman with purpose. Clearly, you're huh. driven. So I don't want you playing around. Huh. But for you, who are your three greats? And you can't think too long. First name. Okay, wait. Mind. Does it have to be a athlete lady across, or no, no, across athlete. A... And it's to you, okay. somebody who you think has done amazing things. Because some some sports have more notoriety than others. But you might okay. know somebody who's done great things. First name, boom. Sia. Definitely. Sia. 
Mm-hmm. Not see, see, see definitely. See I, I, think, I think I think I think because I, I I know at first I didn't know his story, mm. like when I was still growing up. But once I got to learn his story, I got to find out about him and stuff. Then I, I his story is n- not so different from my story. Very true. Yes. Very true. And I understand. It's called being biased. Number two, <laughs> two. Next name. Okay. I will take Precious and Tembo. Okay. Maybe you know she's a notebook okay. player. Okay. Yeah, she's okay. a... Sh- <laughs> I like it. No, I like it. This is a good list. I, you don't need... Wait. I, why are you... <laughs> you don't need to explain. Because I feel like some people will explain and just... That one no, I agree no, 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 no. That oh, one... Are you going to give me, give me a precious. sentence why? Why you think she is one of the greatest? Oh, my gosh. To you. She's very passionate about what she does and about the uncles. So, what? It, all these athletes have something linked to me. And that's why they that's are. That's why... Thank it, you. Your third one. Serena Williams. Oh, my. You don't need to say. She is one of mine. She's in my, she's in my list somewhere there. And I love how all three of these people are kind of like her in some way or form. Like, they kind of all come together yes, to make. Yes, they all link to me. Yes, and I love Fearless, it. Fearless, very hardworking, passionate about what she does. And remembers and where they come is, from. And exactly. Also, yeah, and that it. is who I am, you know. <laughs> it's pretty much... If you guys wanted to skip ahead to a part, this is the part. That is who she is. And thank you so much for sitting down with us. It's been insightful. Um, I see nothing but greatness, more greatness in your future. And uh, maybe she'll crack my list. Uh, wow. Maybe. If she keeps going wow. at the right part, she might. It's a tough list. It's a tough list. Thank you so much for having oh, me, Fez. Thank you. Thank and you my so name much. is Zintlen Daonde. I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I will see you beautiful people on the next episode and uh, stay safe. Hopefully this connected some dots.